Hello and welcome to another edition of Young People Doing Big Things. Our guest for today is Inyola Osapia, another 17-year-old software developer. He is a software engineer at MYDP Hungary. He is also the co-founder of Frelapay. Now, a little bit about Esther. Ed Software Software Development Academy is a software training academy based in Lagos. The academy runs a three-month program that trains students to be able to build simple applications. And on to the business of the day, we have our host, Enoch Olisa, and our guest, Enyola Osabia. Hello and welcome to another edition of Young People Doing Big Things. It's the July 2022 edition. My name is Enoch and I'm so happy to have you here. Wherever you're watching us from, you're very much welcome. If you're not joining us for the first time, Young People Doing Big Things is a community of young people doing awesome things in tech. And on the show, we bring them we speak with them, we hear how they started, how their journey has evolved and their aspirations for the future. And on today's edition of the program, I'll be speaking with somebody who, when I think about, I get very much excited. His name is Eniola Osabia. He's a 17 year old software developer who started out in 2017 He's a software engineer at MYPD Hungary, that's a country in Europe. He's the co-founder of his own startup, Frelapi. Of course, we'll hear more from him what Frelapi does. And he's also the convener of Gen Z Tech. Gen Z Tech is a community of young techies across Nigeria and Africa. We're going to hear how he started, how his journey has panned out, his aspirations for the future, and of course, what he's currently building. Eniola, it's nice to have you here. You're welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Mr. Enoch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so let's um, hear from you directly, your age, and um, will, um, um, your studentship, I mean, in the education um, progression routes, where you are exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've said everything. <laughs> uh, I'm Eniola, uh, currently 17. Uh, and then, um, in terms of like my position as a student, mm -hmm. this is tough. All right, but I'll just say I'm taking the gap year right now. Okay, okay, correctly on my gap year. Okay, okay, you're most welcome. Okay, so, um, Eniola, I mean, of course, I'm privileged to know some things. Um, I mean, some things about you, but our listeners would like to know, when did you start coding? Yeah, I started back in 2017. Coincidentally, you were the one who taught me how to code. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly right. So, uh, but yeah, 2017, it's been five years now. Okay, let's hear a bit of story around it. Okay, I'm, um, I, I mean, you definitely know the old story, but so this will be yeah. for our listeners. Yeah. Uh, so it was basically going to be like a you know a boot camp that was to kind of equip you know, the young teenagers back then um in church um to you know equip them with like knowing the basics of coding and putting them on the right path to like kind of understand how all of these things work on like building a website and building a very basic app or something like that. Um uh, and then I took part in that program. Uh there were two sections I remember that uh, that was I mean. By all means, by standards of like how the two different groups were classified, I should have been in the junior, but then I should have put my head into the advanced class. Um, and I would say it was really helpful when you tried to scrutinize me there and were like, um, you know, uh, do I know, like, what have I done before? And I was just like, uh, I used to do it here on my mom's phone, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it was, it was fun. It lasted for three days. Um, after that, we became a group, kept on building projects for communities. I mean, for like the church good. Um, and then we really touched like so many different topics in terms of like um, understanding how you know how things work from the fundamentals. So yeah, it's it's really been fun. Okay, okay. So I mean, of course, very um, 
the muscle up story. I remember it clearly. And one thing I would remember quite vividly is also times where in Nigerian speak, you make mouth. I was like, this guy, this guy has <laughs> yeah. mouth. He's not coding with mouth. But I think I must really appreciate that. I mean, the work you began um, to put in rose to the um, rose to the level of, I mean, the mouth um, you had made. And of course, yeah, they, yeah. They, can see, they can see. Okay, so let's yeah. also still go through your mind. What made you start coding? Um, so I think our first day was out of curiosity. Um, but though there was something that fraud that curiosity. I, I recently talked about it one time on a kind of uh get together we serve at Genzo Tech is like the community uh not like a get together more like a checkup chat that we do uh but yeah it was out of curiosity I mean my brother just told me about the program I even missed it I didn't get the announcement in church that day um and then he told me I was like hey Henry Rafa there's this thing I heard about the coding blah 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 I was like oh yeah I mean it was during summer um and I kind of had all the time in the world even though I was going for a summer school back then but yeah, that was, I'll just say it's out of curiosity. And I generally love computers, right? So, you know, it was, it was okay. fine for me to just be there. Okay, I'm curiosity. That's nice to know. Okay, let's uh, move to software development proper. What's your stack? Uh, yeah, currently full stack and cloud. Okay, and, and what, what are the tools that you use? Maybe the programming and languages? And the developer tools that you're proficient yeah. in. So, so um, I actually started out with like the lamp face, um, that which was kind of old. Uh, that's like the um, PHP, SQL, Apache, and all of all those type of things. That's where it started from. Um, but lately, I've kind of transitioned a bit into the uh, main stack. Uh, with that is like Mongo, Express, React, um, Node.js, as well as TypeScript. Um, and like those are for you know development and now when we talk about like the cloud space, uh, we talk about Docker container containers um, and like basically setting up like AWX um, architectures and stuff. Okay, that's nice to hear. Okay, um, and your lab, I said I started out to have five years, five years of experience in building apps. Okay, so mm -hmm. to you, what would you say has been your highest points in software development? Hmm. Uh, I think I've had so many IS points and they always like pick at the same time of when the project is like when I finish solving the bug. That's always my highest point. So I, I don't know which one is so high because like there's always that excitement, especially those ones that are like you spend days on. Like I feel those are always my highest point. Um, apart from that, uh, let me see. Really, none is coming to mind right now. Like, I guess, you know, there's that joy every developer gets when they solve a bug, so you, you can understand <laughs> that. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me add more flesh to this um, previous question with this new question. Mm -hmm. Um, has software development opened doors for you? So, in adding flesh to the previous uh, question, that's uh, moving away from technical stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's say, um financially or let's say uh, career-wise would you say so, uh, being a software um, like being a software developer has been rewarding and has it opened doors for you oh yeah yeah it, it really has um i remember i dropped some highlights that went crazy on the internet uh, late last year which was more like Airlines for just 2020, not even like previous. Year. I mean, nothing much happened previous years, but just 2020. So is it 2020? I mean, 2021. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it really has. Um, okay. It has. Okay, that's nice to hear. And if someone asks you, and you're like, is coding hard? Mm -hmm. What's your response be? I mean, <laughs> from experience, most people who want to enter the field, you usually have these questions on, on their mind. So if one of them asks mm -hmm. and you're like, coding hard, what will your response be? Uh, well, to me right now, like to myself, if I ask myself that question, I would not say coding is hard. But I think at the early stage, I won't really say it was hard. I just I just feel it's something of if you have your mind to read, like like you you really know, you really want to learn this thing. I just feel it will kind of break that barrier of something is tough or, you know, it's hard at all. Like, I mean, 
I mean, there are some hard times that you probably, which is general, like when you have a stump, you have to like, you know, kind of cross through a stumbling block. Like that point can generally be tough to understand, but I won't really say like, you know, it's, it's hard. Like, I mean, it's that you can look at it in multiple ways, but honestly, right now, I won't say it's hard. Um, and I, I, it's it's actually not easy at the same time. It's it's just there, like you know, it really it's really up to you. Like if you're really are passionate or there's something driving you to want to learn this, it's kind of going to break all the barriers or the thoughts of it's hard, it's easy, and you just do it. Okay, okay, thanks so much. And so for those who are listening and usually have this question, I think that's a very good question. On the community, one of the things we tell our members is do big things, do hard things. How we think about it is this: If it was um, easy, everybody would be doing it. So, if it's not um, easy, then there's some form of it being hard. But you just um, um, have to do it. Put your mind to it, um, as you said. Thanks so much for that response, Eniola. Let's move on to mm -hmm. some other um, questions. This question now is for mentorship. Um, I want one of the things we know is that from experience, mentors can make the journey um, easier. They can show you the path to take. They can give you some insights that will be helpful for you on the journey. So, do you have uh, any mentors? Uh, of course, like what well, I'm talking to one of them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, I definitely do have. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, would you mention um, some others? Um, honestly, so have people who you've gained major um, insights from, people who have shown you the way. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I, I usually very find it very hard to call people mentors, but I mean, there are some people that have picked from their story, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I watch interviews of like maybe founders, like techpreneurs who are kind of hit that peak, peak point, right? I try to just learn from their story. Um, some people, I just really also love their stories, like Inyi, Aboyeji, uh, Adewale, Yusuf, yeah, I guess those are some two couple of guys. And like, just generally, like, you know, you just listen to some people's stories sometimes and you just be like, oh, wow, like I can probably relate to this moment or I'm currently at this phase. And then you just know that, I mean, they made it, they crossed all of these barriers and they are there now. And then I'll just give you the courage to be like, yeah, you can keep pushing and get there sometime. Okay, okay thanks for that um, response. I mean, I, I, I can pick from that story too. That's one of the things mm -hmm. to I do. When I listen out to some of the people who have gone um, ahead of me, so I won't really call mm -hmm. them my mentors because I don't have a personal exactly. relationship with them. But I'm always like, okay, how can I pick from this story? What exactly. can I do that will be useful to me on my journey? I mean, exactly. I can pick from that. So thanks so much, Eniola. Okay, let's now go to some of um, the fancy stuff. What's your dream computer? My dream computer? Yeah. Like your dream, uh, your dream device. Uh, I think I'm using it already. Wow, wow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, it's it's not really going to be a dream anymore. I mean, I don't really fancy gadgets like that. I just need something to get work done, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's it used to be a Mac. For every developer, it's usually a Mac. Um, but yeah, like, I already have one, so yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's nice. Still talking about dreams. What would be your dream company? I mean, using present tech companies as templates. Definitely Google. That's been Google since like year two and it's still Google. I mean, yeah. though I'm having some thoughts to know if I'll still probably work for someone or I'll just start my own, but yeah, it's Google. If if I have to look forward to like a fan company. Okay, okay, that's nice to hear. Most of the guys, most of the young guys who I've spoken with to usually Link to us at Google. That's nice to hear. Okay, yeah. let's still build on that. Um, and as we discuss this question, what's your plan for the future? I mean, five, 10 years, where do you see yourself? I'm working for yourself, I'm working for your company. Yeah. Okay, um, definitely having my own thing. Um, it's definitely a unicorn already. Five years is going to. It's too far. <laughs> yeah, but let me not be, you know, crazy on thoughts. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely working on something uh, my own. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that's just it for like next five years. Okay, okay, that's uh, nice to hear. Okay, then um, some of the stuff you're presently uh, building, 
um, I would like to share. Let's start with Frela P. Like, yeah, okay. Um, let's know what Frela P does and how we can, I mean, how it could be helpful to someone who is listening to us. Yeah, okay, but it's, uh, definitely. So Frela P is a, um, it's a, it's a management and payment solution for freelancers, right? Um, and the idea is that like freelancing doesn't have to be tough, right? You should not also be getting scammed by your freelance project and all of that. So the ideology of Freelance is there are two things: there's the management side and there's this payment side. Because payment side is actually still a problem for a lot of freelancers, especially when you start looking at the international um, level of how do you want to receive money in freelance. I mean, and all of that and get it changed. Uh, but starting with focusing on the management side, um, and that is like you know when you're doing a project, how do you safeguard yourself and safeguard like the person you are working your project with? So we bring in the ideology of break every milestone project into like a milestone um, and kind of like get paid for every milestone you complete before you proceed to the next one. Um, in the roadmap, we look at, I mean, um, implementing things like escrow. So, you know, the payment is already done and then we disperse yeah. it to you. So it's not going to be a problem at all. So yeah, that's, that's, that's full happy. Okay, that's nice to hear. Let's also talk about Gen Z Tech. Yeah, Gen Z Tech is okay. So, uh, yeah, so Gen Z Tech is a community of you know young developers, innovators, designers, anyone in the tech space, honestly, because really it has grown. And then I know I've spoken to some couple of people who are even like you know tech marketers, like digital marketers, and that kind of thing. So it's it's kind of like a community for everyone, young people, uh, Gen Zs, of course. Uh, you know, for us to just be able to network, get to know each other better, uh, and just, you know, build the next great things together. That's nice to hear. And I'm aware you're having a tech fest coming up um, soon. Yes, okay. yes, definitely. So this is one of like our major events, uh, kind of also just preaching the, um, the word of, you know, getting people to get connected, no more people, like let's all act as a family out there. Um, so um, Hackfest is like one of those events. So there is a two in one. There's a hackathon and then there's a conference. Um, the hackathon is to get people to build, you know, be innovative, solve problems, and of course, get prizes for that. <laughs> and then the conference is for us to, so there's a highlight for that. Um, the community has like a lot of products and startups of, of like people are building so many amazing stuff. Some people, um, some of them are already well known. Um, some are not well known so the idea is for us to get to put the word out there more on a grand scale which is like a conference honestly um, to get people to know more about this product and to get people to be very excited or and to even inspire like the other people who will probably be attending this for the event that are not already in the tech space that you know they see young people building so many good things and then they kind of just get motivated to want to also build theirs and you know yeah that's the idea oh, oh, that's nice that's so inspirational I mean, I can relate to some of these things. Nice one, um, Kenyola. Okay, let's move forward to business and nation building. Okay, what are easy problems around us? I mean, as Nigerians, do we feel softwares can solve? Uh, easy problems that I feel we feel software can solve, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, let me um, let me rephrase the question. Firstly, do you feel software development is underutilized in Nigeria? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yes, okay, it so, is. Okay, so why do you feel um, that we, and what do you feel, I mean, what um, areas or what problems do you feel, mm -hmm. I mean, applying some softwares or developing some softwares for could have easily solved those problems? Yeah, I mean, thanks for kind of asking that question first, because I mean, it made me. If that question is a, is like definitely we're not um, utilizing software now. So if I say yes, like all of those different things are like they kind of come into the picture. Because when you just ask that first, I was like, uh, yeah, no, but like I don't know the exact point. So yeah, let me just jump into it. Um, I think there are so many ways. Like the fact of probably you have to get somewhere and this people still do like the manual process of things. Probably like getting to, you know book an appointment or you know it's 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 really underutilized and in terms of like transportation like if you if you have to probably uh i mean there's uber now which is kind of like um, solving that area but i feel feel like um let's look at like not not public transport but like this i won't call it semi-public like 
um, the PRC stations, all of that. You can't really, it's not really digitalized. You can't even know, like, like then in advanced countries where you can know when the bus will be at the station, right? You know, all those type of things. We really don't have them yet. And I still feel these are places where um, tech, and even majorly in the education sector, like, um, you still not all schools are already implementing like results management systems. Like you can't always request your results online and all of these different types of things. So I still feel really um, tech can be um, implemented or utilized in these areas very well. Okay, okay. Thanks so much. Let's hope in the coming years we have solutions that fix this problem. Okay, it's been very nice speaking with you. Um, um, and you'll like, just very quickly before we go, I'm sure some of our listeners would like to put your social media um, handles so they can follow you. So you can tell us the social media platform and your handles. Uh, definitely, you can follow me or uh, check me out any for sure. E N I 10 number four S U R E. Okay, that's um, at any for sure. That's um, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or anywhere. Instagram. Yeah, on LinkedIn, just search for my name. Anywhere you actually search my name, you'll find me there. But if you have like to search for a username, it's any for sure. It's not any for sure. I'm not on that platform. Okay, but start with that username. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, um, Eniola. It's been nice speaking with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and thanks so much to you, our viewers. We've been speaking with Eniola Osabia, and I can tell you for sure that he's doing very, very, very um, big things. It's nice um, having you here. And like I said um, earlier on, we bring this event to you every month where we speak with young people um, doing big things. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next month. Bye for now. Bye.